Steve Kim. I've jumped full board on the uh, Deion Sanders to the Cowboys uh, bandwagon. Yes. Uh, I'm not apologizing, but I am admitting I was wrong about Deion's coaching ability. Uh, am I crazy for thinking Deion would be a great fit for the Cowboys? This is more stunning than when Hulk Hogan turned heel and did the whole NWO <laughs> thing. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, I don't even. I don't even know who you are anymore, Jason. In terms of your statement, I don't know if anyone's a great fit for Dallas. I mean, I, I think that's a glamorous job. There's a lot of perks. They're going to get paid a lot. But there are some issues that are going to remain no matter who the coach is. Number one, Jerry is never giving up control of that organization from the top down. He's not. And he's going to be the GM. He's going to be a pseudo coach. He's going to be the spokesperson to the day he dies. The, the other thing is, I tweeted yesterday in the late stages of their latest blowout loss. I said, is it in the words of Brian Billick when it comes to the Cowboys, just blow the whole damn thing up? And a bunch of people pointed out to me, Steve, have you seen Dak Prescott's salary that they're stuck with? That is an absolute albatross, and it got me thinking to my beloved James William Jimmy Johnson. Remember, everyone thought him with the Miami Dolphins was going to be unbelievable, a match made in heaven. There was a problem. He was stuck with an aging, declining Dan Marino, and he couldn't get rid of him because he was a sacred cow, and it never really fit together, even though they made the playoffs three out of four years. Now, I do want to point this out in terms of the Dallas Cowboys and who really has control. To be fair to Jerry, post-Jimmy Johnson, they went through about a decade of Chan Gailey, Dave Campo, and a lot of forgettable stuff. But he got desperate enough, remember this, to bring in Bill Parcells. And he ceded him control. And to Parcells' credit, he didn't win a Super Bowl but he left them in a very, very good spot for Wade Phillips. Steve, you you've somewhat dodged my question. I, I you, you say it's not a good job for anybody. For anybody. But it's just not. like he he got desperate, he got desperate and turned to Bill Parcells. He has this is 12, 15 years later. He's got to be even more desperate right now well, and okay. would be willing. And, and Deion Sanders is the one guy who could make Jerry Jones less relevant. Okay, to your point, I actually agree with your premise. I do. And it has to come with the realization from Jerry, no more daily press conferences, no more post-game scrums. Dion, I'm going to give this over to you. I don't know if you want to be GM, but I'll get you a one if you want one. I don't know if you want to do all that stuff. Maybe you just want to coach and lead men. But if Jerry Jones wants to make a splash, that's one part of it. To your point, is he willing to step back and play the owner that nobody sees? I, I, I'm getting sick of watching Cowboy games. And again, this is about 25 years in. I don't need to see 10 shots of Jerry Jones in the owner's box. I don't understand what in the world that has to do with the game other than the fact he's become this character. Um, and, and look, the issue is I believe the Cowboys need to actually start over. But at that man's age, there is no starting over. You, you, you talk about a five-year rebuild, I don't want to make a macabre, but he may not have five years. I'm just going to be honest about it. But if you want to make a splash, you want to be a, a buzzworthy team, yeah, get Dion, Get Coach Prime. Look. Look, look, rebuilds in the NFL don't take five years anymore. It takes a rookie quarterback getting hot. That, that's all. The Washington Commanders, decent team. They were, they were trash. Last year, the years before, they get Jaden Daniels, and, and again, he's cooled off, but transformation. We, we, we've huh. seen this with last year. C.J. Stroud got hot. He's in year two. They're still playing pretty well. We've seen it with Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. What you, how you get rid of Dak is Jerry's going to have to eat part of that salary, and and have to and then pawn him off on some other team while you pay part of that salary, 
and then they start over with Dion and Shadur. This and and well, hopefully you catch lightning in a bottle. Let's be honest. The insurance model is broken. Crowd Health puts your health care back in your hands. Use the promo code Fearless at joincrowdhealth.com. That's joincrowdhealth.com. Promo code Fearless. This is okay. What so rebuilds are easy, huh? Well, the Raiders are in about the twenty-second year of a five-year rebuild. Uh, okay, and here's the other part of the equation in, in the heart of hearts do you really think Shador Sanders or any quarterback in this draft do you really think that they're an Andrew Luck level prospect I don't I'm not even I so sure any of these guys Andrew are Luck. even in the same stratosphere as Jaden Daniels yeah I said it you cited don't have five athletic. or six examples I didn't cite five or six but I said three two or three three or four yeah Steve I, I first of all I didn't say the word it was easy and, and I didn't say there's an Andrew Luck in this draft. What I'm, they have no choice. They're not going to win with Dak Prescott. They have to get out from underneath that. Eat part of his salary, trade him to someone that wants a veteran quarterback that's reliable and steady and last year during the regular season played at a Pro Bowl level and see what you have in Shadur Sanders. I, I, I get that, uh, you know, He's not Andrew Luck or John Elway coming out of the draft. But who knows? Who thought C.J. Stroud was what he was? Who, who, who knows? You just you thought C.J. Stroud was what he is? You, you thought he was coming in as a rookie and light it up. He was the best prospect last year. I was not on the Caleb. I said C.J. Stroud is a guy. And I'm on the record. Okay. You, Google you, you, me. Re, a lot of people recognize Caleb Williams. <laughs> Caleb Google Williams me. was. <laughs> can I can I make a couple average yeah. sports fan yeah. comments here yeah, real quick? Please, yeah. Uh, first of all, Steve, you have the best intro music in the business. I don't know what that is, but when you come Thank in, you. it is so high. I had nothing to do with uh, it. I Thank believe you. the Dak, the Dak Prescott contract doesn't scare me at all because it's tradable. He's a viable quarterback. He's not going to play the rest of the year. He's going to be. There's no injuries. You can trade that straight up. Somebody would trade for Dak Prescott or at least eat most of the contract. Yeah. Do two lead singers, or if Shadur's with them, a trio, do they work? Can they work in the NFL with two lead singers? Who's the, who's the two? Jerry lead? Jones and Deion Sanders, two lead singers in a band. The only way it works is if it burns hot, fast and quick and Steve that's exactly what you just said the, or or I don't know if you said it. this needs to be something that happens now and immediate if you look at the Steelers if you look at the Cowboys they're patient they take their time they don't move away from people quickly Jerry Jones knows this is a now move he now knows he has to go big two lead singers with Shadura it would be a trio I think it's going to happen okay it I, might. I think that Go ahead, go ahead, Steve. I'm going to make go this ahead. point, and I'm going to go all Buddy Ryan here. Okay, I just want you to know you're not in the Big 12 anymore. Just just going to leave it like that. The talent advantages on the outside that he had in Colorado playing that schedule, he is now in a gauntlet. You're, this, this, this is a little bit different. I, if you think Shadur is going to be the savior along with his father, go ahead. My view is this. I don't think Shadur or any quarterback this draft is going to be that great at the next level. I hear you, but just remember there were guys like Jason Whitlock who said, this ain't Jackson State. You've now moved into a Power 4, Power 5 conference, blah, blah, blah. And I was right about the Pac-12, uh, <laughs> but he's heard that before, that like, Hey, man, that was Jackson State. That was HBCU football. That was the swack. You can't translate it to Power 4, Power 5 football. Well, he's done that, Steve. And, and just to be crystal clear, let's go all the way back to the beginning of this year when you, and to a lesser degree, me, I, I was a bit more skeptical, but I'm not trying to cover myself at all. But we thought the Big 12 would be too big of a test. Yes. For Dion and his team. We did. And oh, this team or that team in the Big 12. I was a tiny bit more skeptical, but I thought it would be too much for him this year. So he's heard all that before. I, I, I think 
when you're sitting there, he is a qualified NFL head coaching candidate at this point. I, I don't think anybody can say that that's not the case. As it relates to Shadur, we have to remember, Steve, Tom Brady was a six-round pick and turned out to be the, you know, the greatest quarterback in NFL history. So I hear you. I'm, I'm right there with you. Shadur holds the ball too long. I don't think his arm talent is elite, but he's really effective. He's, in my view, the MVP of that Colorado football team. I, I, if, if Jerry Jones decided, hey, I'm going to roll the dice with Dion and Shadur, even if it doesn't work out, I'll understand the gamble. I'll understand why he did it. Going this traditional route and saying we're going to build a team this way, this, and we're going to sign a franchise quarterback and give him blah, blah, it hasn't worked. He's in a position where he has to roll the dice. And I think if he's going to, I'd rather see him roll the dice with Dion and Shadur than Bill Belichick and Dak than John Gruden and Dak. That's what mm. this really comes down to in my mind. Which, which gamble would you rather see him take? One that includes Dak and a proven NFL head coach or one that includes Dion and an unproven uh, quarterback? Well, the Cowboys have gone as far as they can with Dak. To his credit, who's led them to a lot of wins. But yeah, I, I think the die is cast there. Uh, I just get the sense that Dak Prescott needs a new, fresh start for whoever is willing, with whoever is willing, to take on that gargantuan contract. Look, I understand the risk, but I, I, I actually think that the best candidate out there hasn't even been mentioned. But again, you're looking for the splash. You're looking for the buzz. We're mentioning. I, yeah. Ben Johnson. Yeah, I get it. He's just a coordinator, but he will be a guy that will have multiple job offers. The job that he has done with Detroit and writing Jared Goff and using old school principles, and but still having an explosive offense. That's the guy that I'm thinking. I thought Detroit was very lucky that he said, you know what? I'm not ready to be a head coach yet. Let me give one more year of my life to Dan Campbell in Detroit, I love that move. That's a guy who's a serious human being. When I look at Detroit and I look at the concepts that they run, I'm like, ooh, someone is going to get one of the brightest offensive minds of recent modern NFL history. Hold on, Butter, before you jump in, I, I just, this is why I'm the host of the show because uh, <laughs> it, it takes a lot of work for Steve to ever get anywhere good, and I have to force it out of him. Man, you but got when, it rolling on when, Steve but, today. But when he gets there, it's actually good. I hadn't thought of Ben Johnson. Holy cow, Same I can't here. believe all the level of work I had to do to get oh, him to say what? that, but he finally came up with a good idea. <laughs> you should be the head coach. I did the See heavy well lifting. Yeah. The players <laughs> Don't miss a second of Fearless. Hit that like button and subscribe to keep up with our latest content.